All right, step number one to the axle shaft removal is we've got the rear end of the car secured on jack stands, one on each side. And I'm going to remove the caliper and the rear disc. Next, with a 13 millimeter six point socket, remove the axle center outside retaining bolt. The bolt should have a large washer and a steel sleeve attached to it. If not, make sure that it comes out with the assembly. Next, we want to make sure that we are able to remove the rear differential fill bolt and the drain bolt. If you cannot remove the fill bolt, then you need to stop and figure out what's going on because you will not be able to fill this back up unless you can get this open. This is going to take a hex bit and I'll tell you the size next. The size of both the drain and the fill bolt are a 14 millimeter Allen. And we're gonna drain the fluid into the pan. After you finish draining all the fluid, go ahead and return the plugs and just put them in hand tight. Uh, well, actually I put that one in normal tightness. And then you have two choices. You can either take the two, I believe that's a 24 millimeter bolt. It's easier if you take the four um, 13 millimeter bolts out. There's four of them and then I've got the jack underneath the differential and we'll lower this down enough to get these two bolts off because then after that we'll need to do that to remove the cover. All right so I have removed the differential cover and this took me probably one hour to get off. Everything is is good until you try to get these two top bolts here here and here there's absolutely almost zero room to get any type of ratchet. If you've looked on YouTube or whatever, people failed to realize the only, you've got the mount here that attaches to the cover. That's not what holds the bulk of the weight of the differential. There are four, uh, I don't know if I can get a shot of it, but there are four gigantic bolts I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Four gigantic bolts, one there, one on the other side, and then on the other, um, you can see the very tip of the flange right there. There are four bolts that hold the differential to the subframe. So needless to say, this, this is not doing anything really. Um, you're not gonna just drop the differential down unless you get to those bolts. And I was not about to try to do that by myself. So it is possible to get these. I'm gonna tell you that this bolt right here, to get to it, these are of course um, 15 millimeter. But what you need to do is you need to get a 15 millimeter quarter inch ratchet because it's thinner. The head is thinner, um, actually for both of these. And I don't have one. The biggest I have is a 13, so I had to use a 3 8 and just shove it up in there. This Mac Tools head is the thinnest I've got, and it's not thin enough. So you can't get a wrench in there. There's no room for the cover. Uh, you have to use a ratchet. There's no way around it. Plus, the bright engineers at Mercedes put this stupid fuel line right in the way of this. So you have to, as you're trying to hold the ratchet on the bolt, you have to push this up or you will never get the ratchet in here. So anyway, uh, just words of the wise. So now what we got to do is there is a clip right. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but there's a clip right in there where my finger is. You have to pull that clip out 
and then this axle will disengage. All right, so here's the clip that came out, and that clip fits in that groove right there. And you have to make sure that this piece is bent towards the wheel. Uh, also, you need to make sure that the shim right here, that you put this on the new axle. What this does is this takes up clearance so that there's no movement um, horizontally of the axle when it's actually installed in the car. So that's pretty much what it is. And yeah, as you can see, the camera will focus. The boot is torn. So uh, I'm going to do the reverse. It's really hard. I can't really do this holding the camera or having it under here, but I'm going to replace that seal, the side seal right there. And um, go ahead and slide the axle back in. Now I was able to do this without dropping the A-arm down, of course, or the differential, and it's very, very tight, but it can be done. All right, so the seal is out. I had to use a seal puller and a hammer. And this looks like the original one. Don't not replace this if it's the original one. Here's the new one. And I'm just going to uh, install it back. All right, guys. Look at what we have here. <clears throat> These are not replacement axle. These are not cheap Chinese axles. These are the original axles that came on this car. I had these redone, <clears throat> completely taken apart, and everything checked inside. New grease, new boots. As good as they were when it rolled off the assembly line in Munich or wherever this car was made. Dusseldorf. I'm trying to see, I made a mark. Well, I'll figure it out. But anyway, so I, uh, I went with these axles because I did not want to use ones that probably wouldn't fit or etc. etc. So these axles have been on the car since 1983. And now they're going back on the car. It's really nice to see proper boots that aren't going to, you know, let the uh, lubricant fly out. So anyway... Uh, the reverse, the assembly is the reverse of disassembly. Uh, the only thing is the clip, which is the biggest pain in the rear. I've already got everything underneath the car clean. I did that yesterday. I'll do one final wipe down of the differential. And I've got the cover already cleaned. And I'm just going to put some anaerobic sealant because it doesn't Mercedes doesn't use a gasket they use uh, anaerobic sealant so I will do that but I'll uh, we'll go over the steps one by one let me figure out which of these are the driver and the passenger and we'll be back hey guys I just uh, remembered on the video I didn't tell you where I got my axles done uh, I got them done from CV source in Buford Georgia and this is the second set of axles that they've done for me personally. John is the uh, owner that you need to give him a call. I put all his information down below. Just tell him Russell sent you. Uh, they did my Jetta TDI axles, completely rebuilt them. Did a fantastic job on both that and the Mercedes. Uh, they do CV axles. They do regular axle shafts, uh, four-wheel drive propeller shafts. They do rack and pinion steering. Uh, I think they even do steering gears. But anyway, give them a call with whatever you have, whatever your project's got, and um, I don't think you'll be at all uh, dissatisfied. They uh, ship all over the country. I guess you would just ship them your whatever you've got to be rebuilt, and they'd ship it back to you. But just give John a call. He can give you uh, whatever information. I don't know anything about these. I'll leave that to the experts. But uh, anyway, just wanted to make sure to let you guys know that, and uh, we'll just continue with the video. 
Hey guys, it's Russell back. So it is the next day and I had, <laughs> needless to say, I had an, uh, a horrible, horrible time getting these axles in, which is why I didn't film anything, but let me just give you a recap. So obviously these are the factory axles that were here. And anytime you, you know, renew them, the joint's gonna be tightened up. You know, there's new grease, new boots, everything on there. So the axles go in the differential fine and I could not, and it was only a couple millimeters, I could not get the axles back into the hub on either side. So what I ended up having to do was I had to lower the A-arm down, which necessitated me removing the shock uh, mount at the top. Well, the only way that you can get that is to remove the rear seat, the whole rear seat, not just the seating pad, but the horizontal part. And that's a whole nother pain in itself. Um, but I had to lower the A-arm down, which allowed me to be able to get the axle in. So that took hours and hours and hours to be able to do that. And uh, not only was that a pain, but getting the rear differential cover, those top two bolts that I had told you guys about, I do not have my 15 millimeter quarter inch socket yet. So I had to do it with the 3 8 which was hell all over again. I did put a new mount. Now, when you do a differential mount, I don't know if you guys know this, but it is actually providing some support to the differential. And when you remove the mount, the differential shifts down. And it's not much, it's maybe a quarter inch at the most. But trying to get this back in get these two bolts to line up, um, you won't be able to do it. So what I had to do is I had to jack up the uh, differential here. And I was finally, uh, it probably took me an hour just to put these six bolts and get everything lined up. But everything, good now. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm, glad I, I'm glad I actually didn't film it because I got, I got pretty mad. This was this job sucks when you're on the ground. If you had to lift, um, it's not that bad, but it just it sucks. I'm just going to tell you that up front. But I'm also going to tell you that uh, it would cost a lot of money if you took it someplace. So just suck it up. Now, when I put the cover on, most people just use RTV, and that's not the proper material that you should use when you anytime you're using especially on the rear end, you're using a metal to metal seal. You should use an anaerobic gasket sealant, which is what I did. I'm gonna put a link to that down in the uh, description. Now, the weird thing about it is some squeezed out here and as you can see, it's still, it's still uh, well liquefied. And the reason is it only cures in the presence of no oxygen. So the stuff that you see out here will be I guess gooey like that for, well, maybe forever. Uh, one good thing is it doesn't harden in the tube, but where the two surfaces are mated, it should be uh, good now. I haven't filled it with fluid yet. I'm going to be using the Amsoil Severe Gear 7590. It takes about a quart in here, and we'll be doing that. And then uh, the only thing up, uh, else to do is just to uh, test drive it. Now I'm going to say one thing, when you guys lower this A-arm, if you have to do that, try to jack the differential up first and maybe you won't have to lower the A-arm. I did something that was very dangerous and I am definitely going to tell you guys not to do this. Um, obviously that spring is like a bomb waiting to go off and when you disconnect, well when your sway bar is disconnected, and the shock is disconnected, there's nothing preventing that spring from jettisoning out of here uh, except that shock. So if you were to uh, take that shock out and do this, then potentially the spring's going to force the A-arm down and that, that shock, or that spring's going to come out. Inside the cup, the spring shifted some because it didn't do it on the other side. I don't know why I did it on this side. So I'm hoping that and there's no way to give you a shot of that it's i mean it's in there but it just shifted some 
So hopefully when I get the car back on the ground, it settles, settles back out, it'll move back to where it's supposed to be. Um, but if I was to do this over again, and if I had to do this, I would definitely go spend $60 and get the factory uh, tool spring compressor because a normal spring compressor is just not going to work on here. But anyway, uh, taking the back seat out was a pain, and I probably will do these shocks at some point. Um, and that will require taking the seat out. So anyway, I just wanted to show you, show you guys what happened. I'm sorry I didn't film it, but I, you know, I had a lot of choice words for this and it was pretty, this job, this job is, well, anyway, it's done. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill the differential up with our AMSOIL and then we'll be back hopefully with a road test. All right, guys, so I am doing the test drive. We're at 131, 80, almost 806. And uh, there's nothing really to see here. The axles are doing wonderful. Transmission shifting well. No noise, no clicking, no nothing. I adjusted the vacuum or the uh, pressure on the modulator, the transmission is shifting so much better. I do not have to put the uh, gear selector down at all to get up the hills. It's doing really, really good. But yeah, I mean, uh, nothing to report, nothing to really show. It's the Mercedes is now officially roadworthy. That was the last thing I needed to do. There are a ton of different things that we're going to have to do. Um, more to the car, but you know, I can drive it anytime I want now. I don't have to worry about uh, being stranded. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the video. I could uh, do this all day driving, but I don't think you guys want to see that. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit that subscription button, and I will see you guys on the next video.